Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023, and today we are going to be talking about the state of Wisconsin and a brand new lawsuit that was brought forth towards the Wisconsin State Supreme Court today, announcing that the left, the Democratic Party, will be challenging the Wisconsin state political maps from the state assembly to the state senate, now all the way to the congressional map. Now, the Democratic Party in Wisconsin has been in the minority for quite some time in the state legislature, as well as in the overall House delegation that is sent to the United States Congress. And it isn't because the state of Wisconsin is a red state. In the 2020 presidential election, Joe Biden won the state by just around a percentage point, 0.6% to be exact. It's by no means a blue state, but it certainly isn't as red as its maps might suggest. If we take a look at the House election results that coincided with Joe Biden's victory across the state, you can see here that Democrats just won three out of the total eight seats in the state of Wisconsin, just three seats out of eight, which puts them at an undeniable minority. But it gets worse. You can take a look at the state assembly elections, but one extremely egregious example of how gerrymandered the state of Wisconsin is, is the 2018 maps that show in the state assembly election, the Democratic Party won the popular vote across Wisconsin by nearly 10 points, you're talking an 8-point margin in favor of the Democrats, and yet they won just 36 out of the total 99 seats. Republicans maintained 63 seats again, despite having just 45% of the vote to the Democratic Party's 53%. This 8-point margin made up for just a single gain in the state assembly. Why, might you ask? Again, because the state maps were so exceptionally gerrymandered. You can see exactly how weirdly drawn these maps are. They make no lie logical sense, except as if you are drawing the map in favor of the Republican Party. Now, in the current status of the state assembly, the Republicans have 63 seats, Democrats have 65, but the state Senate map is also just as bad. You can see Republicans here have a 22-seat majority to the Democratic Party's 11. Keep in mind, the elections here typically are very balanced. Democrats and Republicans roughly around the same vote share. In 2022, Democrats won the governorship while Republicans won the Senate elections, a perfect uh, representation of Wisconsin politics, but not when it boils down to these maps. As I've shown you, the congressional maps are gerrymandered, the state Senate maps are gerrymandered, and the state assembly maps are gerrymandered. But why now? Why is there this challenge all of a sudden coming forth before the Wisconsin State Supreme Court? Well, it comes down to the victory. A victory that helped decide the overall composition of the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Daniel Kelly and uh, Janet, uh, I believe you pronounce her name, uh, Protozewicz is how you pronounce it. She ran in an election they ran in uh, earlier 2022, in which the Democratic Party won by a pretty substantial amount. Uh, it was a very big victory, 2023. It was a very big victory for the Democratic Party because for the first time in 15 years, the Wisconsin Supreme Court entered into what the Associated Press calls a new era of liberal control. Again, over a decade, uh, the Wisconsin Republican Party, Wisconsin conservatives have had a majority on the court that holds no longer. Now, this is very good news, obviously, for the Democratic Party. But now that this happened and Janet Protozowicz, Protozowicz was inaugurated today or sworn in today to fill this position, we are going to be seeing a lot of challenges around Republican laws, not only pertaining to maps here, which will be the most impactful for overall party control, but also in terms of challenges towards some of the Republican laws that were passed under a Republican supermajority in some instances when it came down to the Wisconsin State Assembly. Now, with this announcement of a challenge on the map, it's going to put the 2024 elections back on our radar for the Democratic Party, as they have been, but not super intently. Now, the Wisconsin elections here, you can see, went to the Republicans 6-2 to two in the last election. I showed you a map in 2020 that was 5-3, to three, but it got worse in 2022 because Republicans took advantage of their majority and made it even more difficult for Democrats to win in the state of Wisconsin. Now, Republicans hold a 6-2 to two advantage with four solid red states with margins from Republican plus 23 all the way up to Republican plus 95. They've left just one singular district that wasn't meant to be competitive, but ultimately ended up being because 2022 was such an anomaly election year. You can see here that Wisconsin's third district went to the Republicans by just four points. But regardless, this map was drawn in a way meant to be solid for the GOP. And Democrats knew that. But what they didn't know, or at least what they did know, actually, what they knew at the time as well was that the Republican court was never going to listen to their argument. 
So when the court flipped from red to blue or conservative to liberal, however we want to talk around it, I think it's better to just say red and blue because that's exactly how it is. Then now Democrats absolutely have a chance at changing these maps for the future and in their cases for the better. It is the start of a trend that we have seen across the map, uh, across the nation. For example, Alabama, which is set to have an additional Democratic district following a Supreme Court ruling that rules in favor of the Democratic Party uh, in this state, essentially challenging the map, refusing to overturn or even hear a case overturning uh, a previous court decision. In the uh, majority opinion, they're saying that Alabama had a history of going after uh, voting rights for minority Americans, specifically black Americans in the state of Alabama dictating that there must be an additionally drawn uh, a map here to uh, comply with the Voting Rights Act. But it wasn't just Alabama that was impacted. It was South Carolina too, Louisiana too, where we are seeing copycat court cases expected to have very similar rulings to what we have already seen nationwide. But Wisconsin is a particular case because in this instance, the challenge here isn't just going to be about the Voting Rights Act. I think Democrats are going to try to make an argument there, but it's also going to come down to just a question of gerrymandering, whether or not this makes sense for the Wisconsin Supreme court. And because the Constitution is open to interpretation, they have the agency to strike down this map in favor of the Democratic Party, order a court-ordered redraw, or have an independent commission that would inevitably result in at least an additional Democratic seat. Democrats are only down by five nationwide and expect Alabama to pull through. So at a baseline, if everything holds two additional seats to Democrats, meaning they just need three more to win back the House majority, you start to see why it's becoming increasingly and increasingly more likely as South Carolina is expected to redraw, as Louisiana is definitely expected to redraw, as now raise, uh, concerns are being raised in Georgia in Florida even. You're seeing the Voting Rights Act being constantly relitigated now, now that the Supreme Court has affirmed that it must hold strong in states like Alabama. You are going to see maps change in favor of of uh, the Democratic Party. New York is set to redraw a bunch of states across the country. The only downside for Democrats at the moment is North Carolina, which is expected to redraw in favor of the GOP. But right now we have Wisconsin on track to benefit the Democratic Party. But again, it doesn't just stop at the congressional level. The state assembly elections are going to be very interesting as we look through all of the elections that have happened in recent time frame, because Republicans have held on to this majority for quite some time. You can see in recent elections, even in 2022, which arguably Republicans should have won the state assembly based on the fact that they won the popular vote by nine points, but a nine point victory doesn't translate to a two third victory, right? 54 to 45 does not translate to 64 to 35. That's not how this should work. It should be representative of the population. And that's exactly what the Democrats are hoping to do, and potentially, given the opportunity, I don't think this is going to happen because they don't have uh, the state legislature in their uh, boundaries, so it would probably be a court-ordered redraw, but I think they're hoping for a more favorable map given that they've been at a disadvantage for quite some time now. So Wisconsin here, we will likely see a complete reemergence of Democratic strength in the Wisconsin State Assembly, a reemergence of strength in the Wisconsin State Senate that will result potentially in a trifecta for the Democratic Party. And I know it might seem entirely out of reach, but we have to keep in mind, it happened in 2022 when you take a look at the state of Michigan, which ended up going to the Democrats uh, alongside the state Senate for the first time in 40 years. This was the first time the Democrats had a trifecta across the state Senate, across the state House, and it was so hard fought because the maps were drawn in a fair way. Because Wisconsin, Michigan is a swing state, you found the maps slightly favoring the Democrats in terms of actual results because Democrats won the popular vote. For instance, in the Michigan House of Representatives, Democrats have a majority 56 to 54. In the Michigan Senate, Democrats have a majority of 20 to 18. Now, we have seen the power of a change in legislature. We also saw it in Minnesota, which in 2020 had a Republican House, had a Republican Senate. In 2022, Democrats flipped both chambers alongside Governor Tim Wall's winning re-election. Democrats took their one-seat majority in the Senate, their six-seat majority in the House, and they have steamrolled legislation. They've legalized marijuana across the state. They've made voting access easier. They have passed some of the most progressive legislation we have seen across the United States with some of the slimmest majorities, which is a testament 
to how a switch in party control can completely revolutionize a state's politics in favor of the Democratic Party. I mean, this Supreme Court election in Wisconsin holds so many consequences that we haven't even begun to start to see the repercussions on the Republican side and the benefits on the Democratic side of this election, which is, again, a testament to how important some of these one-off elections actually are. Are. We are starting to see just the beginning of a significant amount of challenges to Wisconsin proceedings, uh, challenges to Wisconsin abortion laws, challenges to Wisconsin voting laws, challenges all across the board because of one election that took place in April of 2023. A 10-point victory for the Democratic candidate here at the time was seen nonpartisan on the ballot. Everybody knew what side of the aisle that she was on. She built her entire campaign also on one thing in particular that I think will be a very interesting point for the 2024 elections, and that was the issue of abortion. As the Associated Press reports, abortion drives liberals win in Wisconsin court election, and they could not be more correct. This was a case. Would the state Supreme Court uphold an abortion ban across the, the state of Wisconsin? And the voters said, we don't want that to happen. So even though they voted for President Biden by a margin of just 10 points, uh, sorry, of just one point in the 2020 election, they went to the Democrats, or in essence, the liberals, by 10 points in 2023. This is a strategy the Democrats have already employed in Wisconsin in the governor's race, one. They now employed in the state Supreme Court race, one. And given that we are expecting a number of shifts in the state's political maps, we will likely see that argument continued and providing Democrats victories in the 2024 election, potentially alongside President Joe Biden, who is slated to win the state of Wisconsin in 2024 and against uh, in a potential rematch against Donald Trump, according to current polling data. So we can see here that there is, number one, significant electoral repercussions. As Donald Trump loves to say, in uh, you know, relation to the Supreme Court, elections have consequences. And Wisconsin Republicans are really going to see just how bad it's going to get for them now that the map is going to be redrawn. Now, arguably, it's better for democracy that the map is fairer. But on the partisan side, you know, Democrats obviously have a huge benefit from this. Republicans at a huge detriment. They're going to look at this and say, well, you know, you've gerrymandered New York. We shouldn't be able to have to redraw our maps, whatever, right? Win some Supreme Court elections there. And you know what? You got that, right? You got the Supreme Court to rule in your favor in New York. Wisconsin is just one part of the puzzle. There are gerrymandered states across the country, and I'm not here to defend the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. I'm here to say both sides do it. So when one side gets the slight upper hand in one state, I guarantee you the next time an election comes around, as we will see with North Carolina, it will balance out. It will balance out. But for the meantime, until we start to see that balancing out, Democrats are inching closer and closer to the House majority. And as politics is, as I do say that it will balance out, I mean inevitably. I don't mean for 2024. I think Democrats are the favorites to win back control of the House, just given how close they are right now. And historically, Democrats do win House seats in presidential election years, an average of around six to 10 gains when it comes down to the House of Representatives in election years. The only exception being the 2020 election, which actually throws off the average quite a bit, right? You know, you're talking about other elections where, for example, in 2008, Democrats were picking up 20 seats, right? You're talking about other elections, uh, you know, even 96, Democrats were gaining seats. 2016, Democrats gained six seats despite Hillary Clinton losing that presidential election. My point is, Wisconsin brings Democrats a lot closer to a victory, as does this decision to now challenge the maps. It's the state assembly, it's the state senate, it's everything that matters and more. And this is just the beginning, uh, just a piece of the puzzle for a Democratic victory in 2024. Because down ballot races where you have strong candidates, competitive races, people are working on getting out the vote. There is a lot of repercussions from just this one election that will start to serve as a butterfly effect, where maybe if Janet Protasiewicz wasn't elected in 2023, that maybe Joe Biden would in fact lose the state. Think about it from the perspective of the state assembly. Just one competitive district added into the fray that used to be a Republican stronghold. Local candidates are turning out the vote. The state uh, across has competitive congressional maps now. Now they're in a swing district too. So you have congressional candidates on both sides of the aisle driving up turnout. Then on the presidential level, you have competitive races driving up turnout. If every election matters on your ballot, you're more inclined to vote than if just one did or two did, right? So that's where you start to see this benefit. And as we will see, a influx 
of Democratic victories in the state assembly will translate to an influx and a push upwards of Democratic votes. I do recognize that people absolutely vote down ballot. 90% of Americans do. But at the same time, there's a significant portion of the population that will care about these races, that will look deeper into it and say, okay, I might be voting for Joe Biden, but I want to look closer into these races. And then if they do end up voting for the Democrats, they become more and more likely to do so as well. Those split ticket voters also will be at a position where they will now know more about the candidates, won't be just going with the incumbent, will now think the races matter. So their vote actually matters down ballot rather than just ignoring it potentially because there are voters that just vote in the presidential level. All around, I think that this comes out at a net gain for the Democratic Party, whether on the state assembly level, level, the state senate level, the congressional level, uh, the presidential level, and honestly for future races given that we are going to be working with a much more contentious map that will drive up turnout. And as history tells us, typically speaking, the higher the turnout, the better for the National Democratic Party and statewide Democratic parties in many states. So we will see what happens. I think that this Wisconsin Supreme Court race was one that has uh, a lot of, uh, you know, outcomes or a lot of, uh, has a lot of impact, has a huge shift uh, on the current state of Wisconsin and its future makeup. And it will be very fascinating to see how the future elections unfold, given potentially new court-ordered maps following this new liberal control. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen is a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.